In a corner of the world, far away from Rockers High School, lies North Africa, a highly diverse region full of different cultures, religions, and ideas. This region primarily consists of four countries, Egypt, Libya, Algeria, and Sudan. All of the countries in North Africa are mainly Islamic and speak Arabic or a different dialect of Arabic. All the countries are democratic except for Libya, which is under the control of multiple governments because of the undergoing civil war in Libya. All the countries in the region have economies that can support themselves, and Egypt has the most successful economy in North Africa, with a large amount of exports and trade facilitation. In North Africa, in areas like Egypt, Libya, Sudan, and Algeria, there are multiple violations of human rights occurring, whether it's been made to the public or not. These can include rape, murder, harassment, punishment for speaking the mind, and various other items. In Egypt, we have seen instances where the government has killed its own Egyptian citizens due to speaking out against the government. In Sudan, we have seen humans being raped while held captive in government facilities. This is not the first time terrible events like these have occurred in world history. We've seen this before in Germany in the early 1940s, Italy in the 1920s, and the early 1100s with the Catholic Church in Europe, where people were unfairly punished for speaking out their mind and then being raped or murdered to, in an attempt to stop them from speaking out. We can help by sending in organizations to these areas and monitoring suspicious activity in an attempt to stop these horrible human rights violations from occurring ever again and hopefully make the areas in North Africa a safer place. Inside a small jail cell lie over 30 prisoners, crammed in a place made to house no more than four. Locked up, like animals they pile on top of each other. To the authorities, these people are merely numbers in their prison books. No regard for human dignity is given, let alone human rights. Territorial disputes in North Africa have decreased since the late 1900s when the Northern African nations have gave independence to sub-Saharan states, but the problem was Morocco had controlled the states. From this, Morocco left the African Union and many battles and conflicts occurred on the northern borders. However, now these nations have stepped in to come together for the better of the African economy and nations, and Morocco has rejoined the AU. Although tensions between these countries still remain today, as northern African countries did not agree with the decision to bring Morocco back into the AU. The conflicts on the northern borders have decreased for the better of the African economy. Some 150 sub-Saharan migrants have managed to enter the Spanish enclave of Malia from Morocco after storming the border fence. Dozens failed to make it across and were detained by Moroccan authorities. Some migrants hurt themselves trying to make the crossing. In North Africa, nuclear weapons are not a problem. The Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty was created on July 1st 1968. It was created to stop the use and creation of nuclear weapons. As of 2015, 190 countries have signed this treaty, including North Africa. As of right now, North Africa does not possess any nuclear weapons and are helping the cause of stopping nuclear weapons and more focused on using nuclear energy for better use. In Libya in 2003, disarmed at nuclear weapons. In 2010, the Sudanese government has started working on nuclear power programs and in Egypt, they have made sure that the Middle East is a nuclear-free zone and forced nations to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. This is part of Tunisia's remote and desolate landscape along its border with Libya, deep in the Sahara Desert. It is crisscrossed with historic smuggling tracks, tracks now being used by organizations like ISIS to export terrorism across North Africa. The Arab Spring tore down the old order, but also provided breathing room for Al-Qaeda, and now the Islamic State. First ISIS expanded in Iraq before seizing much of northern Syria. Then a jihadist group in Egypt's Sinai Desert declared its loyalty to ISIS leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Among the thousands of foreign fighters who flocked to the Caliphate, Tunisians, Moroccans, and Libyans. At least 300 of those Libyans returned home from Syria late last year, mainly to Darna, traditionally an area of Islamist militancy. ISIS quickly built a presence in a country where order collapsed.
From the east, ISIS fighters moved to Sirte along the coast, massacred Christians, and carried out a suicide attack in Tripoli. ISIS has frequently told supporters, if you can't come to Iraq or Syria, join the fight in Libya. Dozens and maybe hundreds of Tunisians have done just that, including the two terrorists who attacked foreign tourists in Tunis, killing some 20 people. They'd received weapons training in Derna, according to the Tunisian authorities. Across North Africa, both Al-Qaeda and ISIS are taking advantage of weak governments and these vast open spaces to expand their reach. And security forces lacking money and modern equipment are struggling to keep up. Some of the current solutions to stopping terrorism in North Africa include the UN and NATO forces helping counter-terrorist forces with arms and training. In Egypt, the country has created a counter-terrorism force from its army that regularly fights head-to-head -head with terrorist forces. This approach allows Egypt to directly control their fight against terrorism. With the help of other countries, hopefully North Africa can gain its much-deserved peace and freedom.